Now, whether your perspective on cloud is, I can't wait to get off the patches and updates and servers, and I'd, I'd rather use a cloud service like a Salesforce or AWS, or your perspective is that no way, no how am I going to use the cloud, I hope you'll find some examples here that might be relevant to you. So just to put the cloud in perspective, every 20 years or so, there's a massive IT disruption. And here's one rendition of history, right? We start off with the mainframe. Our data was nicely entombed in the mainframe. And then comes along the PC. And I'm worried about, hey, my data sitting in the PC. It might get disclosed. So we create this category of device security. And then comes the internet. And I'm worried about all this bad stuff that may come in. I create a very nice encircling the perimeter of the organization, my firewalls and proxies. Uh, and network security becomes a nice category. But now if you look what's happening here is your data in some cases already outside the perimeter. It's sitting in a Salesforce, it's sitting in a service now, it's sitting in Office 365. In some cases sitting in services you're not even aware are being used in your organization. Your employees, more often than not, are not sitting behind a firewall. They're sitting in a Starbucks. And very often you're, you're collaborating with partners who are not coming behind your firewall as well. So that perimeter is getting a little strained, it's getting a little less relevant. But you still need to make sure you secure your data. And that, that's the need for this whole cloud security paradigm you're talking about here. So the most important thing that we care about is our data. At the end of the day, that's what matters to us. Whether we try to control the data by controlling the device, that's just a proxy, no pun intended, for trying to control the data. When they try to control the data by controlling the network, that's just another proxy for the data. The data is really what matters at the end of the day. I hope you agree with that. And there are two primary systems of record that we care about. The first system record we always had is data on-premise. And the second, more and more, is this data that's sitting in the cloud. It's sitting in a third-party system that's not my own. Like I said, it's sitting in a Salesforce, sitting in a 365, it's sitting in ServiceNow, it's sitting in Box. And so let's, let's focus on those two because that's really what matters at the end of the day. And data security is what we care about, right? It's the security of our data. So the first vector of, of data leakage is when this data that's sitting on premise somehow leaks out through shadow IT. Shadow IT in this case are services that have not been approved and vetted by our IT security organization. <coughs> this is the issue that happened with Target, with Anthem, with OPM and others, right? We had data sitting in our, in our uh, private data centers that was leaked out inappropriately. Now what happens here is that in many cases, these services are not necessarily the ones that our employees are using. In some cases, they are. In some cases, these are services that are leaking out through our, our perimeter and going to a third party, right? In some cases, like in uh, Target's case, we know it was the HVAC vendor, right, that, that they leaked out to. In some cases, we know it's, it's, a, it's a file sharing service that hasn't been approved, hasn't been vetted, but somehow it gets through our, our proxies and the data's leaking out. So that's one vector that we need to worry about. Now, when we look at the data that's sitting in a system of record that's in the cloud, there are two more vectors we need to worry about. One vector is what we call north-south. So this is the front door. This is the front door to uh, dhs.salesforce.com, right? This is, this is DHS instance in Salesforce. That's an example, by the way. I'm not saying DHS is using Salesforce. Um, and so the front door is where somebody comes and gets the data, right? And this now, the problem here could be a rogue employee who's downloading all the information before he or she walks out the door. The, the vector may be a compromised account. Somebody who's not supposed to get access to the data is now getting the data from the front door. That's what, that's what we call north-south. But a more insidious situation is the east-west. This is not a front door situation. This is where I can access the data from the side, from a, from a conjoined system. Let me give you an example. If you're using, let's say, a collaboration service like 365 or Box, and I share a file with you. What I'm doing is I'm sending a link to the file. I'm not sharing the file. The, the file isn't moving on the network. So there's nothing on the network that I can observe to see the file is moving. There's, it's in the back end of the system, back end of Salesforce or, or Box or 365, there is a, a link that gets shared. So the, even if I guard the front door, there's nothing I can do about the side doors. That's part of the problem that, that we see today. More than 50% of all data security leaks in a service like, like, a, like a 365 is through these side doors, is the east-west interaction, right? So these are the vectors that we need to worry about. So far, so good? Now let's, let's just focus a little bit on some of these. Let's focus on the shadow IT problem. So the average large organization, many of you uh, 
subscribe to that today, has more than 1,400 cloud services in use. 1,400. That's impossible, you say, right? I, I, listen, I'm in the business, I can't name 1,400 cloud services. But that's what's happening. Our employees are using services that you never heard of. Our marketing department typically uses 50 to 80 cloud services for all sorts of things. Things that are making them more productive, for sure, but things that have not been vetted by our security organization. Our employees, people like you and I, are using services like ZippyShare and PutLocker and, and, and uh, 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 FindSpace and others, which most of us haven't heard of, but which makes them more productive because maybe they're a soccer dad or a soccer mom and they're sharing a, a photograph with someone and now that you brought into, into the, uh, your work environment and now that's a service being used and your data potentially being exfiltrated there. So it's 1,400 plus services in use on average, but what's more telling is 89 of them are high risk. Now by high risk, we mean services that can be used anonymously, which is a bad idea in general, right? Because if I'm gonna exploit your organization, I'm gonna take the data out through a service. I'm not gonna do it through the old fashioned USB way. That's, that's, too, that's too dangerous, that's, that's too restrictive. I'd rather take the data out through a service that your firewall proxy has no, no, no awareness of. In fact, Jim Routh came up with this uh, term we call proxy leakage. Of the 20,000 plus services, cloud services that are out there, th there are probably 22,000 by the time we finish talking today, more than 8,000 of them are classified as internet services by existing firewalls and proxies. Now, you cannot shut down the category of internet services because you have mutiny on your hands, right? So these are wide open. These are services that are wide open from your network that you're not even aware of. There's no objective assessment of risk. No, no way to take your governance policies and enforce them today. And the last one is the whole notion of using a shadow IT as a data exfiltration. Again, the examples are Target and OPM and so on and so forth. And so the the controls that you need are discover what's going on, get an objective assessment of risk, remediate, make sure your firewalls and proxies are cloud aware, and I'll show you how, how one can do that. Take your control systems, your control mechanisms. Your control mechanism might be that any service that can be used anonymously, I don't want them using my organization. Any service whose terms and conditions are that the data belongs to the service provider, I don't want them using my organization. Any service that's hosted in an ITAR country, and on and on, right? So you may have these controls somewhere in a Word document. You need to take those controls and operationalize them, leveraging your existing infrastructure as far as possible. So that's, that's a critical need. And finally, it's, you'll always have situations where, in fact, it, I think it's fair to say that most of us are already compromised, right? The enemy is already within. So it's too late to close the doors. Now let's figure out when the person's leaving the organization, when the data's leaving the organization. And the way to do that is, is by behavior, right? So obviously we wanna do better two-factor authentication and so on so forth to make sure that the bad stuff doesn't get in. But since the bad stuff in most cases is already in, we need to make sure that we can catch it on this way out. So again, think of the target example, right? When I see anomalous behavior and I see anomalous traffic going out, that's an indication I need to figure out what's going on here. Make sense? Now, when you think of sanction services, sanction services are, wow, I'm running out of time very quickly. Um, a sanction service is one that you have approved, like an Office 365. As I mentioned, more than 50% of interactions are happening not through the front door, right? This is when someone is actually connecting to Word and creating a document directly online. No amount of network inspection will catch that. And here are some, some sort of use cases, some controls you need. I want to prevent unauthorized access from from, being, from data being shared externally. I want to make sure that no data goes into 365. Sometimes that's, that's um, important. I want to block download of data to personal devices and so on and so forth. These are the kind of controls that you might need. And, and in general, again, I'm, I'm going to run out of time. In general, you want these controls to be cloud delivered, right? You cannot have those controls be delivered from your perimeter systems because the perimeter systems are far away from where the, where the, where the activity is happening in the cloud. And so what you need is, is this category of technology that Gartner calls CASB, Cloud Access Security Broker. And if you think about it, it's really putting a control over data going, leaking out from on-prem systems or leaking out from your cloud-based systems. And that's for sanctioned services and for systems of record on-premise. But what about your custom applications, your applications that are running in AWS or Azure? Uh, again, I won't have time to go through examples, but I'll, I'll just give you one here. 
this, is a, this was a large um, auto rental company, a very common one that most of you have used sometime in your lives. They had a, they had a, uh, a rental management system that was running on their private data center. They decided to move it to a public, to AWS in this case. Right? They looked at it, they looked at all the fields that need to be encrypted because they're PCI, and they were fine. Moved it to AWS, six months later did an audit, and found that the operators were putting credit card numbers in the comment field of the application. Now, they weren't trying to be nefarious, they were trying to get the job done because it was probably not as convenient. M now this application is massively PCI non-compliant. Audits give them two choices. Pull it back down to a private data center, well, that trains left the station, or get the developers involved to go and, go and change the code. Again, that wasn't a very, uh, a very um, attractive proposition. So what they did was, similar to what I described earlier, is use that common control point where I define my DLP, DLoS prevention policies, enforce the same policies for data that's going to my custom application without writing a single line of code. That's, that's, the, that's what's required is to have a con cloud control point that gives you the visibility into what's happening with the data, whether it's on-premise or outside, and gives you this control that you can enforce on your data, which is what you care about. And the, uh, just a quick comment here is, is because the custom, there are eight million custom applications out there that, that you know, uh, across different organizations, that it's very difficult for an external entity to come and audit your, your custom application, and this is where we managed to bring AI to, to bear to, to detect those interactions and find a common, consistent way to enforce those policies on a custom application without writing a single edition line of code. So, so again, this becomes now a, a com common control point, not only for system of record on premise, system of record in a SaaS service, but also system of record in your custom applications running in AWS, Azure, Google, and others. So to wrap up, what we see as best practice, the first one is focus on your core assets. It's the apps and data. It's not the networks, which are, like I said, just proxies for your apps and data, which is what you care about. The second is take a consistent approach. Rather than taking a, a shotgun approach, I'll do something here, I'll do something there. I'll, I'll, I'll leverage Salesforce's uh, encryption here, and I'll leverage Box's DLP there, and so on and so forth. Find a consistent way, uh, architecturally consistent way to have a common control point where now your policy can be enforced, that doesn't matter where your data goes. In fact, one thing I was surprised by when I was uh, speaking with uh, a number of folks from the intelligence agency was Slack was a very highly used application. It surprised me. I, it really was. I, I didn't even know that people would know about Slack even want to use it. But we're all the same. We all want to be productive. We all want to have something that's easy to use. And so Slack is one common example where, again, I want to enforce my policy for DLP, whether it's going to Box, OneDrive, or Slack. And the last one is, this, this is, this is um, I, 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 I cannot stress enough, avoid adding friction. If you add friction, if you require your, your, your team's employees to add another, yet another agent on the device, they'll go around it because they can. Right? So avoid a, an environment that is, that is so painful because once you add pain, you'll be back to square one because the employees go around you. Right? So avoid friction and avoid relying on network center controls because network center controls, like I said, only do half the job. They don't do the jobs east-west traffic, which is really where most of your interactions are happening and you may think about the cloud. Thank you very much.